The Way of a Christian, Selections from the Teachings of St. Herman of Alaska, from the Little Russian Philokalia, Volume 3, St. Herman of Alaska. The Way of a Christian Without exalting myself to the rank of teacher, nonetheless, fulfilling my duty and obligation as an obedient servant for the benefit of my neighbor, I will speak my mind, founded on the commandments of Holy Scripture, to those who thirst and seek for their eternal heavenly homeland. A true Christian is made by faith and love toward Christ. Our sins do not in the least hinder our Christianity, according to the word of the Savior himself. He deigned to say, Not the righteous have I come to call, but sinners to salvation. There is more joy in heaven over one who repents than over ninety-nine righteous ones. Likewise, Concerning the sinful woman who touched his feet, he deigned to say to the Pharisee Simon, To one who has love, a great debt is forgiven, but from one who has no love, even a small debt will be demanded. From these judgments, a Christian should bring himself to hope and joy, and not in the least accept an inflicted despair. Here one needs the shield of faith. Sin, to one who loves God, is nothing other than an arrow from the enemy in battle. The true Christian is a warrior fighting his way through the regiments of the unseen enemy to his heavenly homeland. According to the word of the apostle, our homeland is in heaven, and about the warrior, he says, our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spirits of wickedness under heaven. The vain desires of this world separate us from our homeland. Love of them and habit clothe our soul as if in a hideous garment. This is called by the apostles the outward man. We, traveling on the journey of this life and calling on God to help us, ought to be divesting ourselves of this hideous garment and clothing ourselves in new desires, in a new love of the age to come and thereby to receive knowledge of how near or how far we are from our heavenly homeland. But it is not possible to do this quickly. Rather, one must follow the example of sick people who, wishing the desired health, do not leave off seeking means to cure themselves. Love of God Once the elder was invited on board a frigate that had come from St. Petersburg, The captain of the frigate was a man quite learned, highly educated. He had been sent to America by imperial command to inspect all the colonies. With the captain were some twenty-five officers, likewise educated men. In this company there sat a desert-dwelling monk of small stature, in an old garment, who by his wise conversation brought all his listeners to such a state that they did not know how to answer him. The captain himself related, We were speechless, fools before him. Father Herman gave them all one common question. What do you, gentlemen, love above all, and what would each of you wish for his happiness? Diverse answers came out. One desired wealth, one glory, one a beautiful wife, one a fine ship which he should command, and so on in this fashion. Is it not true? said Father Herman at this, that all your various desires can be reduced to one, that each of you desire that which, in his understanding, he considers best and most worthy of love? Yes, it is so, they all replied. Well then, tell me, he continued, can there be anything better, higher, above everything, more surpassing everything and in general more worthy of love? than our Lord Jesus Christ himself, who created us, adorned us with such perfections, gave life to all, supports all, nourishes and loves all, who himself is love and more excellent than all men? Should one not therefore high above all love God and more than all desire and seek him? All began to say, Well, yes, that is understood. That speaks for itself. And do you love God? 
the elder then asked. All replied, Of course, we love God. How can one not love God? And I, sinful one, for more than forty years have been striving to love God, and cannot say that I perfectly love Him, answered Father Herman, and he began to show how one should love God. If we love someone, he said, we always think of Him, strive to please Him. Day and night our heart is occupied with this subject. Is it thus that you, gentlemen, love God? Do you often turn to Him? Do you always think of Him? Do you always pray to Him and fulfill His holy commandments? It had to be acknowledged that they did not. For our good, for our happiness, concluded the elder, at least let us make a promise to ourselves, that from this day, from this hour, from this minute, we shall strive to love God above all, and fulfill His holy will. Behold, what an intelligent, Superb conversation Father Herman conducted in society. Without doubt, this conversation must have imprinted itself on the hearts of his listeners for their whole life. The Providence of God A terrible accident has a power to awaken us to the realization of the existence of various calamities and dangers surrounding us, from which the providence of God preserves us. At the same time, it convincingly persuades us to acknowledge our own infirmity and weakness and to seek the Father's protection and His most powerful defense, which affirms us in the wisdom and the Word of God, which came down from above by the will of the Heavenly Father under the curtain of flesh like ours, woven by the divine might from the most pure Virgin for our salvation. He became man, and deign to teach us to pray that we be not led into temptation. This reminds us from what Father we have our existence, and this in turn should make us seek our heavenly fatherland and our eternal inheritance. The Spiritual Warfare Not amidst the stormy waves of the sea are we tossed, but within the seductive and much agitated world, suffering and wandering according to the Apostle's word. Although we do not have such grace as the Apostles had, still our wrestling is against the same fleshless principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spirits of evil under heaven, who strive to intercept and hold and prevent all travelers toward our heavenly fatherland. For, according to the word of St. Peter, our adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Wherefore, we weak and infirm ones most certainly have need to seek help from each other's prayers. The elder was occupied in his cell with handiwork, when suddenly his disciple Gerasim came to the cell and did not say the usual prayer, by the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord God, have mercy on us, at the door. Entering the cell, he said, Bless me, Father. The elder answered nothing. The disciple repeated his request several times, but the elder did not answer. The disciple stood for several hours and finally decided to leave the cell. Coming again the next day, he said the usual prayer. The elder answered, Amen. The disciple said, Bless me, Father. And the elder blessed him and sat down at his work. Then the disciple asked him, Father, why did you not bless me and answer me when I asked you yesterday? To this the elder replied, When I came to this spruce island, many times demons would come to me in my cell, sometimes in the form of a man for some necessities, and sometimes in the form of a beast, and did many fearful and evil things to me. This is the reason why I do not receive anyone in my cell without the prayer.